Today I'll be checking out Saudi Arabia's seven trillion dollar transformation. That was the scariest roller coaster. Expat society out here is booming. We have a massive Saudi Arabian feast in front of us. Bro, we just have to get there and get out. That's good. Jamie's losing the plot. I actually would call this my forever home. I'm going to be going to a $47 billion skyscraper. Bro, this is actually trippy. Big enough to hold 20 Empire State buildings, a $30 billion mega futuristic city with a theme park two and a half times the size of Disney World, a world class high end fine dining destination. Oh, right, Google. All the way down to a $75 billion dollar luxury waterfront resort. But first, we'll start here at a 1 million square meter entertainment quarter that was built in only four months, Boulevard World. What is the best thing about Boulevard Riyadh? I'm from Australia, do you like me? Yes. Very, very, very good Australia. And what should I do here at Boulevard Riyadh? Where are you from, Mariela? I'm from London. So when you first came to Boulevard Riyadh, what did you think when the what happened with the the, the, the like? What happened with the what? What did you just ask me? I'm here from Saudi Arabia. What do you think foreigners uh, should do in Saudi Arabia? There's a lot to do to do in Saudi Arabia right now. You can go to Dir'iyah, you can go to Boulevard City, Boulevard World. There's a lot of places to go. What was the question? What's the best thing about Riyadh? The security also. You feel very safe here? Yes. I don't feel safe in Sydney sometimes. So. <laughs> what do foreigners need to know about Saudi Arabia that they don't know? People here are very welcoming and very happy to have you over. People are very hospitable and we would love to show you around. After hearing from the people of Saudi, it was now time for me to explore Boulevard World with the help of my tour guide Daniel from Trademark Group of Companies. I've just come across a real life robot. Australia, it is a wonderful country. I hope to visit it soon. What? All right, so we just saw a real life robot for the first time. Very interesting experience. She actually spoke Australian and the guy who she was dating knew my videos apparently. That is actually sick. It's like a fortune teller ball or something. Wow, wow, wow. So we're in France right now. So we have the, what is it behind us? The Arc de Triomphe. Arc de Triomphe. There's the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower, no Look. way. Bro, it looks like we're like, we're like actually in France. Look at all the buildings. We're home away from home. Home away from home. The thing that shocks me is they did this all in four months. Four months, that's 120 days. Like there's new buildings. Mo oh bro, it's actually like, it's got no words bro. We're just under the Eiffel Tower now and I think next destination is Japan. I agree, let's go. I actually haven't been to Japan. It's a place I want to go to. It's a bit like China. Looks realistic, feel like I'm in the country. Just so much dopamine is going to my brain right now. I can't control it, you know what I mean? We suddenly spotted a gigantic roller coaster and I wanted to surprise my cameraman, Nick, who's absolutely terrified of rides. How are you finding Boulevard World so far? My first time overseas and I don't know if like, the rest of the world is like this, but this is like amazing. Like I'm spinning out hard. It's not really like this, bro, because you're in Saudi Arabia, but you have all these different countries in the same country. You go on the roller coaster? Let's do it. Nick's coming as well. You're coming as well? No. Nah. Why? Never in my life will I go on a roller coaster. Why? Please. Come on, Nicky. Please, please, please. Come on. No, no. You gotta come. No, no, Nick's no, coming no. on the roller coaster. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it was now time for Daniel and I to go on this super scary roller coaster. But unfortunately, I couldn't convince my cameraman Nick to come on with us. All right, we are officially walking to our death. Oh no. That's the line. That's the roller coaster. Why are we doing this, bro? Like the wind was just like tearing my eyelids back. Never again. I reckon I'm done. Never again. After miraculously surviving this roller coaster, Daniel was keen on sharing some insights with me about Saudi Arabia's seven trillion dollar 2030 plan. I think like what Crown Prince His Royal Highness Mohammed bin Salman has done with the implementation of like the Vision 2030 and his vision to make Saudi Arabia into like a modern tourist destination, not only like a tourist destination, like a business hub, a tourist spot, and just a, a place for leisure, it's, it's been amazing. There's so much potential in this country. What's happening in such a short amount of time? If you think about it, the Vision 2030 was announced and it started to be implemented in 2017. It's astounding what's happened. I think people are like around the world don't really see it like we do because obviously we're here and it just seems like a, a dream but then once you're actually here and you're in a place like Boulevard World where this whole thing was built in four months, you get a grasp of how big the country is trying to become and excel and accelerate everything. So man, it's like mind blowing. What an evening. Been so romantic, I wish you were a girl. <laughs> and there's like what, 10 plus countries in this joint? Yeah, 10 plus countries, theme park, yeah, cinema, ride, games room, restaurants, 
Mountains, everything. Man-made lake. And how do you think this place in particular will, you know, facilitate Vision 2030? People that come to Saudi, they, they come here, you know. It's a boulevard world, it's an experience. If you thought Boulevard World was amazing, wait until the end of this video where we fly to Saudi Arabia's Red Sea Project to visit a $75 billion resort. But before that, Daniel showed me some giga projects as part of the Vision 2030 plan. All right, guys, we are outside a construction site called New Maraba. Daniel, would you like to share with the viewers what this site is? New Maraba is a construction site in the Riyadh area called Maraba. It's going to be the largest downtown in the world. The project was announced as a part of Vision 2030 in February 2023. Our project value is around 48 billion US dollars. 48 billion. So it's going to be a massive queue building in the, in the middle of Riyadh. So right? inside the Maraba project, is, it's called Mukha. And the Mukab is a golden cube that's around four square kilometers per end to end. You're going to be able to enter into it, it's going to be interactive, it's going to have you know, in, indoor shopping centers, indoor living, shared office spaces, the whole lot. In a couple of years, we're going to see a large golden cube here. So we're near uh, one of the Giga projects called Kadia. Kadia is one of the main projects, I guess a part of the six Giga projects in, in the kingdom. Yep. It's about 75 kilometers out of Riyadh. It's gonna be a huge precinct that has everything from schools, universities, living quarters, entertainment centers. Are there gyms here, water parks, everything. roller coasters? All e that everything, stuff. And, and not just the biggest gyms, the biggest water parks, the biggest roller coasters in the world. They're gonna be building a stadium in the side of a mountain. It's gonna be the biggest stadium in the world. So it's gonna be, an amazing project. I think the project cost is around 80 billion. 80 billion dollars for Kadir alone. For Kadir alone. Wow. It's going to be amazing. We then drove to a place called Digital City to speak to one of Daniel's friends, Mariella, to talk about her involvement on the Vision 2030 project. Where are you from? I'm from London. And how come you came to Riyadh? I came to Riyadh, well, obviously for work, but since being here, I've learned that I really love it here and uh, yeah, I'm gonna stay here for a while. And I'm involved in one of the Giga projects. How come you moved all the way to Saudi Arabia from London? It's a place to be for construction. So do you see yourself living in Saudi Arabia post Vision 2030? Yeah, definitely. I love the country and I feel very safe here. I think the expat society out here is booming. What about the people that you've met from overseas? The majority of people are here to work, however, we've made a really nice community out here and yeah, everything's going well. I've met a lot of people from London, the UK, all across Europe, all around the world really. What are they doing in Saudi Arabia? I think a lot of people are here to work on Vision 2030 and all the projects that go behind it. Where do you see the future of Saudi Arabia going after this? I think it's going to be a really amazing place and I hope lots of people come here and see what it's all about. All of this talking made us hungry and we were one step closer to arriving at the $75 billion Red Sea project. But before traveling there, we went to a fine dining precinct called Bujari Terrace. We have a massive Saudi Arabian feast in front of us. Before the waiter arrived, you said you're allergic to, is it prawn? Prawn. Does that mean if you eat one, you're going to die? Possibly. So should I, we don't wanna, I don't want to test that. <laughs> I'm going to try this first. It's like the chips with truffle. I'm going to try that. Oh, oh wow. mm, that's really good. I always wanted to try truffle fries, so mm, yummy. I've noticed in Saudi Arabia, and I've eaten the food here, including when we ate the fast food, like like the McDonald's equivalent to Saudi Arabia, which is called our bike. I noticed that like, even though the chicken was fried, it wasn't too oily. So the same thing with these chips. It's like more dry, not so oily as like normal fast food. All right, now we're gonna try one of the bowels. Mmm, it's got like a nice um, garnishy sauce to it. Mm. I don't know how good your one was, but that one's like really nice. Oh, what next? There's a hummus and it has a uh, meat in it, so beef, like strip. So you take one of these little breads, you open it up like that, get the hummus, put it in there. The bread in Saudi Arabia, I've noticed, is really fresh. It's very different. It's different to Wonder White or Helga's. Like that. <laughs> We just got squirted on. Is that a traditional gesture? Yeah, it's welcome. Where they, where they wet you with the right. with the Coke Zero as you walk in. I liked it actually personally. It's refreshing. Yeah, I feel refreshed. <laughs> Anyways, what's next? You can try the prawns. Are you gonna try some yourself? Mm, definitely not. What would actually happen if you ate one though? My airways would close off. Oh, right, really good. Cool. I can yeah. imagine. Bro, that's really good. Cool. Do you want some? Positive, man. I like how it's like fried and stuff. I've never seen that before. Amazing. It tastes very Middle Eastern, as it should, but it's really good. Okay. Ready, spring roll. Ooh. What's in there? I have no idea. What's that down? It's like meat. It's proper. None of that vegetarian stuff. It's just traditional. Arab food consists of a lot of vegetables, rice, you know, bread, and these type of things. So, in Saudi Arabia, you can't drink alcohol. So this is a, uh, what, like a mocktail, mojito. Passion fruit mojito. Mm. Very fresh. It does taste fresh. Very fresh. All right, so I reckon out of all these dishes, my favorite person would have to be the service, obviously, this guy, you know. But truly, the prawn, which Daniel is too scared to eat. That's nice. my favorite. What's your favorite? I must say, I like that a lot. 
Well, that was a Saudi Arabian lunch for you guys. Where to next? Wait and find out. It was now finally time to fly to Jeddah, Allah Allah. another city in Saudi Arabia, to visit the promised $75 billion Red Sea project. But what happened next was truly a nightmare. What a morning, huh? So this morning, we actually missed our flight from Riyadh to Jeddah. Had to book a whole new one. Daniel wasn't going to come. And then we booked a new flight. And now Nick and I are in Jeddah. And then Daniel said, actually, I'm coming. But now we have to rebook our tickets back to Australia for a day later. I'm on hold to the travel agent. And um, we're trying to get our flights rebooked. But we're not too sure if we can. So what a morning. All right, so our goal for this Red Sea experience is to number one, interview some people about what they think. Number two is to find the most beautiful, picturesque spots of the Red Sea in Saudi Arabia. And number three is to try and sneak into someone's villa. We're not sneaking, but be invited in. That's what we're going to say on camera, at least. Hi. <laughs> say hala walla. Hala walla? Hala walla. Assalamu alaikum. Wa Oh, he understands that, but not hala walla. Hey! We arrived at the Red Sea, but we realized that the tourist attraction we were looking for was a six hour drive away. And we also forgot to book a car. We were running out of sunlight to film. After we were all finished bickering at each other, we decided to embark on the six hour drive where we would arrive at 5 a.m. But all of a sudden, we ran into another problem. Worst comes to worst, we'll hire a Chevy with a driver. We have an hour to get the driver from where he is now to this place to take us six hours away. What I need you to do is call the resort. I'm gonna book the $4,000 for one night accommodation. And then once I book, which is non-refundable, then you're gonna try and get a car. And if you can't get a car, then we just can't go and I waste the full grand. The hotel said they've got to get a driver from where they are to drive down here first and then take us. And they said, we'll get there by five in the morning. More dramas and checkouts at 10. <laughs> yeah. And we have no accommodation here and we're running out of sunlight so we're going to be homeless as well. You know we're going to be homeless as well. Oh, and also we have accommodation back in Riyadh which I have to extend because our stuff is still in the room. And if we don't get accommodation, this is where we're sleeping tonight. <laughs> I just want to change of clothes. You know, we're all stressing out but we're like, you know what, this is good content so... All three of us were on the phone trying to book cars and accommodation but nothing seemed to be going our way until I came up with a genius idea. I have an idea. Let's flip a coin. This is the moment of truth. Are you guys ready? Okay, so heads, we make the six hour drive to Six Senses Resort and tails, we fly back to Riyadh tonight. What's it gonna land on? Tails. You wanna go back to Riyadh? I honestly wanna go to the place, but it's a six hour drive, so heads. I reckon heads as well. I don't know if I'm supposed to be happy or not. Uh, I don't know, but... Oh, all that effort for nothing. So we're going back to Riyadh. We're going back to Riyadh. Going back to Riyadh wasn't so bad after all. As much as I wanted to check out the $75 billion resort, it was good to be back. But what I was really curious about was why Daniel, our tour guide from Trademark Group of Companies, gave up his entire life back home in Australia to move to Saudi Arabia to help with their Vision 2030 plans. All right, Daniel. Firstly, bro, just want to thank you um, on behalf of myself and Nick for giving us such an incredible experience in Saudi Arabia. And yeah, bro, just want to hear a bit about your story. I mean, it's an amazing country and we've been here for about a week or two. What motivates you to do what you do in Saudi Arabia? Firstly, my pleasure on behalf of Trademark Group and Australian State Business Council and Forum. Like I'd like to thank you both for actually coming and experiencing it. For me personally, I think growing up in Australia, you know, you, you don't really get exposed to the outside as much because Australia is so far, so a lot of people don't travel. I've lived here now for approximately seven months. To be honest, the last seven months has changed me. I think this is such an amazing place and I'm, and I'm not just saying that, like I, I genuinely love this place. This country, the people are so hospitable. It's so amazing. I actually would call this my forever home. And uh, how have you felt myself and, and Nick have been on this trip? I think since I picked you up at the airport and, and shown you around, I think you've realized there's a lot more to Saudi Arabia. There's a lot happening here and it's an amazing country. I think, I, I hope you guys come move in with me. <laughs> and yeah, bro, once again, on behalf of myself and, and also Nick, just want to thank you and Sam for facilitating us and, and showing us around this incredible country. And there's obviously a lot more to come from Saudi Arabia. So thank you so much, bro. And uh, I look forward to uh, working with you guys in the future. Thank you. Ha, ha, ha.